Harlem week ends on a Sunday, but there are plenty of festivities planned for this weekend. And you can head up to St. Nicholas Park tonight, in fact, to catch the New York premiere of a new horror film called Red Pill, which follows a group of friends on a campaign trip right before the 2020 election. We are a majority in this country. And we're going to win the election. Do you know what the red pill is? A red pill is someone who infiltrates a group and then destroys them from the inside. I think we should call the sheriff's office. What is that? Yeah, oh the my. Nightmare That Follows is a perfect fit for today, which is Friday the 13th, right? If you're a horror fan, then what perfect day to watch a horror film and on Friday the 13th. So we're happy to have the writer, producer, director of the film, who also happens to be a Tony Award winning Hello. actress. The resume is long. <laughs> Tanya Pinkins, Hi, welcome to Fix Up More News. Welcome. How are you doing, Tanya? Thank you. I am awesome. I'm so excited. This will be the first time I get to see the film with a live audience oh. because of the pandemic. So oh. I'm very excited. Yeah, so uh, we are excited to talk to you about it because we're used to seeing you on stage, right? In front of the camera, Fear the Walking Dead. You won a Tony Award for Jelly's Last Jam. You've played uh, on this, in, in the soap opera All My Children, one of my mother's favorite since 1991. So what made you decide then to hop into the director's chair and tackle the genre of horror? Well, one of my favorite quotes is by an uh, Austrian sculptor, Egon Vayner, and, and he said, the most appropriate response to abuse is creativity. And I had this sense of what was going to happen with the election. And every time I said that in 2016, people treated me with contempt. Mm. So I thought, okay, I'm going to make a movie about it. And then people can just say it's so far-fetched. <laughs> oh, well, and, and we'll see how far-fetched it is, because this story centers around the recent presidential election, right? So you kind of alluded to it. When did you start writing the script and how long did it take you to finish it? Well, I got the idea in July of 2019 and we were, we shot it on uh, Halloween was the first day of 2019. <laughs> how <British>. appropriate. <laughs> so we were finished shooting November like 11th of 2019. Yeah. So I, yeah, I, I, this was what I foresaw. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and Jordan Peele, I mean, hello, get out, right? He really opened the door and, and highlighted so many black writers in the horror genre when he released that film. And I was just reading one of your recent interviews that kind of talked about Get Out as a little bit of an inspiration for you here. So so talk a little bit about the connection. And, and so are you a horror fan? <laughs> I'm a super horror fan. I watch a couple of horror films a day. Wow. They put me to sleep because what? they're you know it's not real <laughs> it's far it's far more relaxing than like looking at the news every day where you're like oh my god that is something really yeah. painful and i can't do anything about it so i i enjoy it it's an adrenaline rush and um telling this story knowing that people were going to think it was far-fetched i was like okay so let's make them laugh at these crazy things and we thought we'd be released in march of 2019 but you know COVID had another plan. And so now things that happened in the movie, people are like, did you write this after the 2020 election? I was like, no, I wrote it over a year before the 2020 mm -hmm. election. You had the vision. You know, there's a lot of layers to black horror movies because it's not just about the scary scenes, but black horror films also incorporate social commentary, which is relevant to what's happening at the moment. And that in of itself can be scarier than some of the horror scenes itself. I mean, was that part of your mission here? It absolutely was. You know, I took all of the tropes that you find in a horror movie and I kind of flipped them. In the opening of most horror movies, it's usually young teenagers and you find out who the monster bait is. And so you kind of don't have to pay attention to that. My film, you've got middle-aged people who are not talking about who they're sleeping with. They're actually talking about global warming and political elections. And so you kind of have to pay attention. You know, there's the trope that the black person dies first. There are surprises about what happens in this film. So the social commentary mostly of what is it like for a black woman to um, know something or be very instinctively feel something's gonna happen and be told she's wrong, she's crazy, mm. be gaslit, and then have it come to pass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, and, and again, I was I, I'm reading one of your recent interviews where you talked about some of the gaslighting that you've experienced and how the film you really want, in particular, some white liberal women to pay attention to. Can you kind of get into that a little bit? I think that, you know, one of the, I, I happen to be in critical race theory 
uh, school this week with um, the African American Policy Forum. And one of the things they've been talking about is America's assault on thought right mm. now. And part of the way that um, white nationalism and white supremacy rear their heads is they've taken white womanhood and made them the authority inside this um, this very frightening organization. And so it's in our culture, it's kind of sacrilegious to even attack white womanhood. And so I was like, well, let me do the sacrilegious thing. Let me go at that since that population voted over for the previous president. And I said, you know, if those women would not go for the GOP, you know, grab our guy, we could we could we could bring about democracy mm. and equality mm. for people. So I really wanted to hit my community, which is women, because I don't know yeah. what it's like to be a man. Gotcha. Sending the message really with this film, um, and, and I love the thought process that went into it. You know, audience and critics, I can see behind you, they love the film. It's already got numerous awards. Um, so if people can't make it out to St. Nicholas Park tonight, how can they watch it? The film has distribution through a court international, and it'll be released online in December of this year. There you go. So many layers. I like mm -hmm. that we're peeling back the onion layers here to talk about this. Tanya Pinkins, thanks so much for coming by this yeah. morning. Thank you so much. And have a great day. Stay safe. Hey, you too. You too. Uh, by the way, you're going to head back to Broadway anytime soon? I don't know. I kind of like this filmmaking. I ah. like it too, before you. You have a few up your sleeve still? Are you working on some other ones? I got a lot. I'm, I'm supposed to direct Zombie Wedding Musical. You're, um, now we're talking. <laughs> a musical? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> All right. All right. We'll be talking to you. That's for sure. Come back yeah. soon. Thank you. Best right, of luck with this film. Going to have all the details in tonight's showing uh, for the Red Pill on our website, pixlevin.com.